Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. This is database fundamentals number two. Database fundamentals number one, installed SQL Server. Database fundamentals two, we're going to explore the one tool that you're going to use the most within SQL Server, and that is SQL Server Management Studio. It is a very broad tool. We're not going to cover every aspect of it today. I'm going to get you started in the tool. We're going to understand uh, what the menu choices look like, what the toolbars look like, how to get connected to SQL Server, and a whole bunch of stuff in and around how you can use this tool to get things done inside SQL Server. And just generally how it behaves is what we're going to cover today. So let's get started. Frequently, the best way to learn is to just get started. So let's get in here and find our SQL Server Management Studio. Microsoft SQL Server Tools 17, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio 17. So we're going to open that up. And this is this does take sometimes a longer time to load than older versions of Management Studio. Right. So once it installs, it's going to come up, and the first thing it's going to have is you're going to have your connect to server window right in the center of your screen. You can't miss it, and this is the most important aspect of it. We have to determine what it is that we're going to connect to. Now, by default, it's going to show database engine, but you have other services that it could connect to. Server name, in the old days, if you drop down on this, um, it would be very, very slow, but you'll notice now it's fairly responsive and quick. Um, if you have a name for your server, you've probably already named, have a named instance, this is where you're going to provide that information. You can type it directly in here, you can copy and paste from another source, or you can try to browse for more, and so it will attempt to find versions of um, instances of SQL Server on your machine. Um, you've got two ways of logging in, or, I'm sorry, four ways of logging in. Um, I tend to forget about the new ones. Um, you've got Windows Authentication, you've got SQL Server Authentication. Now, Windows Authentication is pretty standard, and um, that's what we'll be using today. But you also have SQL Server Authentication, which is literally a login name and a password. And th that's very standard methods. Um, or you can get into the Active Directory with MFA, Active Directory with Password, or Active Directory um, Integrated. So there's a whole slew of mechanisms that you can use. Um, we're just going to go with the sim simple Windows authentication right now. There are options that you can get into, and you can look at a whole bunch of additional uh, properties, connect directly to a single database, um, and these other things. For most of us, most of the time, you will not need to change these things. I would strongly recommend you leave them alone. Same thing goes with adding in any, any additional parameters. Again, this is not something you're going to need in most instances. So at least for now, I would leave them alone. So let's connect up to the server. So once it connects, there's not a whole lot going on. Over on the far left of the screen, we can see what's called the Object Explorer window. Now, the Object Explorer window has a whole bunch of stuff to it. We'll start right at the top. First up, it has connections, so we can connect to various different types of, store, of um, services and take a look at those things, database engine being the standard SQL Server connection. We can also um, click on Connect Object Explorer. We can click on Disconnect. Um, there's Stop. There's Filter. There's refresh, and we can look at a policy health state for all nodes. We're not going to get into that today. The basic approach to it, though, is it's a folder structure. This is my server, and it shows the server name, the instance, the version that I'm currently running on. And I can expand it out, and these are my databases that are currently running. And you can see your security, including your logins, and all the rest of that sort of thing. So the basic behavior is very easy to understand and very straightforward. You've got all these various things you can open up and take a look at, and, and they all work roughly the same way. Now, if we just start up here at databases, it's a great place to start. We can right-click on that as well, 
And by right clicking, it opens up a context menu. And that context menu allows us to do things such as if I wanted to create a new database, I could do that from here. Nice and simple way to get things done. Now, if you look across the top of the screen, there are the menu choices. Now, I do have a menu choice you're not likely to see. Um, it is a third-party tool uh, from Redgate Software called SQL Prompt. You probably won't see that on your machine. The same goes with these tools, right, uh, with these icons right here. You may not see those on your machine um, because those are things that I've installed separately. But the basic install is the same. There's file, and it allows us to do things and control things. Edit allows us to do things, and view allows us to do things. And these menus will change as we connect to various different objects inside the database. Now, another thing you want to take a look at is um, we're going to go straight to view, and we're going to look at object explorer details. And object explorer details is a great way to look at stuff. Now, it changes again based on the various things we click on. This is going to change over here, and you're going to see different things listed. So I click on databases, now it's going to show databases. Now it's fun because it's going to give me a snapshot of my databases, show me a lot of detail about them, um, what collation they're on, what their compatibility level is, what the recovery model is, and yes, this is all stuff we'll get into later. But you get the idea, you can get in there and do things from here. Now the beauty of this is there's also detail. So if we click on one of these over here, down below at the bottom of the screen, we get a lot more information and we can select that and expand it up. And we get a whole bunch of the details of exactly some of the settings inside this database. So this is a place that we could, you know, explore various settings and various methodologies. And if we click on different databases within here, you will see that the changes down below and different things come up um, from different choices. And so you, you can see the way it's changing over time. There's the primary file path, space used, all that useful information. And so this is just getting started inside of Management Studio. You've got the Object Explorer window, great choice for um, getting going. The um, Object Explorer detail window is a great way to s drill down and see more information easily. Um, you've got the menu choices, and you've also got all of the toolbars. Now that's it for the introduction to Management Studio. There's a whole lot more to learning this, um, but I want to keep these videos fairly short so you guys can, you know, consume them, you know, at, at a break or, or during lunch hour or something before you get back to work and then keep going and, and, and consume as many of them as you want and then peel off and, and do something else. Hopefully that was useful. You have a good idea of how Management Studio works, how Management Studio is laid out, how to get connected up to your SQL Server instance. That's it. Thank you very much. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.